All right, we are live, everybody, on the Union Sports Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, all over the place. We're going to have Angel City FC goalkeeper Diddy Harasich on in about 10 minutes or so. But right now, Suskia Weber and I are here. You guys, put your comments in the comments section. Let's all keep learning from each other. Join us live every week or recorded on all your favorite audio and video platforms. We will be starting in about 10 minutes. Share this out with the community, guys. I feel like I'm playing a video game. Well, I mean, with the headset on, you kind of <laughs> you kind of look it. So, right? Yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> it's uh, it's. I think it's a good look for you. It's Thanks. gonna look. I think you look very professional. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, I'm a gamer. Yeah, I look, I, I, like definitely. I look, you know, like I'm on location. You're you're trying to get the Gen Z <laughs> Gen Zs anyway. So like now now they're gonna relate to you. They're like, oh. <laughs> We, that's, that's someone we want to emulate. She's cool. Yeah. It's like, now I can get a whole new, like, um, uh, like we can get whoever's making these, who makes these, look, they light up and everything. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. We'll have to look and see what brand that is. I yeah. didn't, uh, I didn't even <laughs> see, I didn't even see specifically. Um, I see. I think you like holding the microphone. Oh, I do. I feel more comfortable holding the microphone. It's from yeah. your stand-up. It's absolutely from the stand-up. Yeah, from your stand-up. Yeah. yeah, it's it's absolutely from the uh from the stand-up. And uh and I just like uh it's a security blanket. It's like holding my stuffed animal <laughs> for me. That's what it is. That's what it is for me. So I uh I, I prefer it in that regard. I almost hummed and I stopped myself before I did it. Um, it's hot. It's hot in the valley. <laughs> like, is there air conditioning on in there? Yeah, there is. Okay. Okay. It's still hot. Okay. It's still hot. Um, That's hilarious. I know. I know, yeah. I know. Now, did you check the union stream? Is the, I don't know if you can check the union stream. I see can't. If it's, uh, you can't? I was okay. normally at home. I have like the studio. So I have oh, the, gotcha. the, 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 good, the newer desktop and then like the old one I bring it up on. So I have, you can just look at it on your phone. Oh yes, I can. Yeah. That's, that's true. Hold on. Just a, just a thought there and then just I, mute your phone. I forget about that. <sighs> your comments already coming through. Sweet. Hey, Jay Deep in, in India. How are you doing? We're going to be starting in a few minutes right now with uh, Angel City FC's Diddy Harasich. Okay. It's so kind of blurry. That's weird. Kind of blurry? There we, there we go. It came through. Uh, it was probably I'm, just buffering. I think I'm that's a word. Yeah, I'm frozen on it, though. You're frozen on it. You're not frozen here. Oh no, you are frozen here. No, I was. Oh just no, not now. Now you're move. Now you're moving. No, I wasn't not moving. <laughs> oh, you weren't moving. <laughs> That's hilarious. I thought literally that was like you were frozen, but you were just not. Moving. I was just sitting still. I was looking at the bottom. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. That is so. Yeah, funny. That's funny. Maybe yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I was like really worried. I was like, I was like, I was like, oh it's no, like, did the whole like stream just go down? Like, what if I just sat here like this? It's like this. You could do that to people and totally throw them off. <laughs> and they'll just be like that. they will be like, this is definitely not working. <laughs> did you watch the U.S. games? I did up until the... Um... The the lightning delay. Ooh. The women's game. Yeah. Yeah. Up until the lightning delay, yeah, I did. Um. I saw some of the uh, Saturday match. Um, well, the the Colombian goalkeeper. Whew, Cat's up, awesome. I yeah, love her. Huh? She's she, great. I was sitting there. I was like looking at. I was like, wait, how old is she again? I was like. <laughs> 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 Uh, we plays. uh we met we met during the pandemic. I know she plays pro. I know. Yeah, it's just wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> hey, you never, you never know, right? You never right? know. I'm like, does she have eligibility? <laughs> <laughs> Did I think you? She, I think she played Mississippi State and University of Miami. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. see that uh, USC and UCLA might leave the Pac-12 and go to the Big Ten? I saw that, and I was like, is that in all sports or just not, or just uh, well, revenue for, gender, like football and basketball? Uh, that would probably be across the board because. I would assume because it's such a power, it's a power five. You would take all your teams with you. Yeah. That means I would be in the same conference as my alma mater. Yeah. You would have a Rutgers USC rivalry. There you go. (laughs) On which, which color, which color of which shade of red is, uh, is the right one. Right. I was like, uh, that's a lot of travel. (laughs) It's a lot of travel. (laughs) That's the first thing that popped in my head. I was like, oh man, that's like, constantly crisscrossing the United States. And then I was like, you're going to have to do one of those, like knock three teams out in one trip type of things. Oh, completely. You know? Yeah. You're going to have to like, Not do like two, like when we go to, or- when we go up to like Oregon and when we go like to, to the, you know, those are quick. It's still like an hour and a half flight or whatever. And we still do two, but I think you're going to have to get more in. Like you might have to stay for like for two weekends. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh Jay Deep uh, in India, by the way. Uh we're talking about um uh bleh, bleh, processing pictures and uh tracking the ball today with DD Harasich. And we're gonna start in a couple minutes right now. So get your questions ready. That's why we got this up here in the thing here. Put your comments in the comment section. Actually, I'm gonna switch this out to a different one. We'll go this guy right here. This one over here. Oh. Hmm. I got this throat lozenge stuck in my, the roof of my mouth. Why do you have a throat lozenge? Are you not feeling well? No, um, because uh, I talk so much that my throat gets sore. <laughs> I also trained two kids back to back yesterday. That 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 does it to your throat as well. Uh, in the hot sun, kids in the hot sun and dry heat. Yep. I know. I'm get, getting ready to go back to hu- humidity. Where are you going? Oh, that's right. You're, oh, you're going back to Jersey. That's right. Connecticut and New Jersey. Connecticut and New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And you haven't been, have you, you haven't been there since beginning of 2021, right? Yeah. No, I was there like, Two, two Christmases ago, before, right when the pandemic, right before the pandemic, like 2021. No, 2021. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Got it. No, it was before the pandemic because I went and saw my parents. It was like that Christmas, like the, the right 20. So it's been two years since I've been to Jer- Jersey. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. I think it's been a while. It's been, it's been, a, it's been, it's been a, it's been a little bit of time. I have, let's see here. Uh, the last time I was in New Jersey, Connecticut was, uh, 20, 17, 18, something like that. It was for, uh, it was for a wedding. It was for a wedding. It was the last time I was there. Yeah. So it's been, it's been longer than you. That is for sure. Although I don't have as many reasons to go as you do, you have a Family. you're like a le- you're like a legend in Jersey. So, <laughs> all right, I am checking to see where Didi's at. <laughs> all right, let's. I know people are like, why are there two people just sitting? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Well, she, they might just be getting off the field, so that would be uh, that would be my guess. So I'm just uh, just uh, messaged her right now to see. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
he remembered that it was today. Uh, well, guys, while we're waiting for dear Didi Harasich, uh, let's uh, let's uh, just uh, get some com comments in the comment section. If anybody has any questions for Suskiel Weber, 99 World Cup winner, Suskiel <laughs> Weber, co-owner of Angel City FC, goalkeeper coach over at USC, put them in the comment section, regardless of whether the it's about the topic today or any just general questions. Like if you want to know more about, you know, her headset, you can put that. In. <laughs> yeah, bring know. it. Oh, I might not. There she is. Hey, Didi. Hi, sorry. I didn't know how to download Google Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Didi. It's all good. No stress. We were like, we were like, oh my gosh, did, did she think it was tomorrow? And we were like, uh, <laughs> We're like, if anybody has any questions for 99 World Cup winner Suskia Weber, put them in the comments section. Yeah, none, none came in. It's okay. <laughs> <None> <laughs> came in. <laughs> no, it's all right. All good. Um, before we uh, before we we do the intro right here, Didi, I just want to make sure your your the proper pronunciation for your last name is Harasic. Harachich. Harachich. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will try not to butcher that. Uh, <laughs> here, here we go. Welcome to Inside the 18. I'm Michael Majid, live from Hollywood, California. With me, you know her as the number one fan of mobile headsets, the one and only 99 <laughs> World Cup winner, Suskia Weber, joining us from a secret location somewhere in the San Fernando Valley today, trying not to melt in the hot sun over. <laughs> We're all in California today. I love it. We're all we're all in California, and speaking of that, uh, we have someone who just made the move to Southern <laughs> California just recently. Uh, we have Angel City FC goalkeeper Didi Harachich. Did I say it right? Yeah, you did good. Good job. Oh yes. <laughs> all right. I tried to give he it pride, a. He prides himself on that. He probably he definitely does. I definitely do. Uh, now, by the way, Suskia, as Didi joins us right now, you started getting all scrambled and uh, pixelated. Uh, so I think uh, I think the 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 the, the 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 mobile gods the internet gods were were not uh not happy with my comment about your about your headset so they decided <laughs> to uh to freeze you for a second but uh you're either back or you're or you're frozen I'm not frozen okay you're not frozen okay <laughs> Didi, early earlier Suskia was literally she wasn't moving and I was like oh my gosh the stream's not working it's not working <laughs> because I and was then, looking at something on my phone and he was like I think you're frozen I think you're frozen I'm like what <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Have you ever had that happen to you where you're like, like you're looking at like an animal or something you're like that. And you're like, oh, that's like a, that's like a stuffed animal. Like there's no way that's like a real dog. And then all of a sudden it like blinks and you're like, oh, oh, that's, right. a, that's a lot. Maybe not the best analogy, but that's okay. 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 That's a, <laughs> Thanks. That I appreciate terrible, that. Terrible horrible. analogy. Horrible. That's a horrible. All horrible. right, guys. I, well, guys, I've been canceled. The show will be uh, hosted by Siskiya Weber for the rest of the <laughs> For the rest of time. Uh, well, well. speaking of animals, uh, before we get into today's topic, guys, and we're going to be talking about uh, processing pictures, uh, which uh, goalkeeper coach Daniel Ball says Didi is just fantastic at, and uh, and tracking the ball. Uh, Didi, why don't, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about kind of, you've got some really cool stuff going on outside of outside of the game of football. Um, you're uh, obviously, you're, you're involved in photography, which I've looked at some of your stuff. It's fire. It's amazing. Thank you. Like, how do you find the time? Um, I don't know. It's difficult, but if I can get to the beach any day, that's, that's my happy place. And that's kind of my safe space. Um, so on our off days, pretty much I'll go as much as possible, but yeah, like you said, photography, I started maybe about three years ago. Um, and I've just slowly gotten better. YouTube became my best friend. Um, and then I, I have two pho photographers that I follow on Instagram and that's kind of where I get my inspiration from. That's awesome. That's a, that's amazing. And you know, it's, it's funny that, cause obviously like you're, you're, you're an interest in ocean, 
oceanography. I'm trying to uh, to pronounce words properly now. Oceanography. Yeah. And uh, is this just a thing in NWSL, like goalkeeper circles? Because Fallon Tillis Joyce, she's like really involved in like marine biology. Is it like all? Of, <laughs> is that like what is part? Like in order to be a professional NWSL goalkeeper, you have to have some sort of a uh, fa- infatuation Love with the for ocean. That ocean. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know, but I would say as goalkeepers, I think it's more so we're creatives in a way. So I can also see that, but I actually didn't know that about Fallon. So I'm actually excited now to learn something. Oh yeah. 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 No, it's a, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. She, uh, she posts all these different, uh, little things. You'll have to follow her on social media and, and check it out. It's, it's, uh, now you're going to have a, something like if if a goal gets scored on uh, against OL rain by your team, you're going to be like, Oh, Oh, but she's like, she likes Marine stuff too. Like, yeah, well, maybe how we do can we go do to the this? beach and hang we out. Can, we might have to separate the two. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Obviously, um, you were at Gotham last year, you know, um, and, and by the way, you know, uh, shout out to you uh, when Kaylin Sheridan was injured. Um, you just were phenomenal out there. Yeah, and it do. was just only a matter of time before you were going to get a number one position uh, somewhere. And obviously this, this opportunity to, to, to fall Freya and, and Daniel to, to angel city opened up and, uh, and you really, I mean, you've been doing an amazing job and I know rebellion 99 is all about you uh, <laughs> right behind, uh, right behind, behind the goal there. So tell us a little bit about that move and, 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 and what's been going on with it. Um, well, first of all, one, thanks for having me. I feel like I, I didn't say that yet, but it was exciting. Uh, unfortunately, I never want to play when someone goes down. Um, so Kaylin, to me, was an inspiration and working with her has been an honor. I've learned a lot from her. Um, so for me to just step in, it was kind of spur of the moment. But I think what Dan has done with me from last year to now what we're doing, it's like we never skipped a beat. Um, and that's what I loved and that's what I continue to hold on to. He's an, he's an amazing coach. And I personally, I've said this to him before, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, he's brought the side of Didi that the world needs to see. Um, so I'm just blessed and honored to be out here. Yeah. You know, it's 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 funny that you say that because uh, I've I've been hearing that from a lot of people, including our own Suskia Weber right here, who had a, some very long conversations uh, with with Daniel Ball uh, when when he first took the job over over at Angel City. And and Suskia, obviously, as a former world class player yourself, you know how important is it for you to have that relationship with a goalkeeper coach when you come into a new environment that you feel comfortable with? Well, I think it's huge not having to, you know, not having to make such a drastic change, Um, not having to kind of start over and have somebody get to know you. um, It makes a big difference. I mean, you know, with the national team, Tony started off as our goalkeeper coach. And then when he moved to the head job, that was great. (laughs) You know, he was still our goalkeeper coach, but the head coach. And so I think that that helped me not to skip a beat either. I didn't have, you know, the staff didn't all leave new staff coming in different styles, different mentalities, different people that they like, um, and everything. It, it, it's I, making such a drastic change from one coast to the other, from, uh, you know, an established team to a brand new team, but not having to change your goalkeeper coach is huge. And it's showing in your play. It really, yeah, is. I will say, I will say it's still been difficult. Like we've had to, cause even though I know how Dan wants to play and how Freya wants to play, you're also bringing in an entire new squad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's a matter of me also getting comfortable playing with four people in front of me that know how I want to play, but also it, like like they want to play differently also. So it's a matter of how can we mesh both styles together and meet yeah. in the middle. Yeah. I think the good thing about that, though, at the same time, is that you're you're with two coaches that know that that is what needs to be worked on more so than – like, okay, you're just not getting it. They don't know you as a player. They don't know your, your strengths and limitations and having to learn that. They know them. And I, I, I think it's great. I mean, like I said, it's showing in your play. Thank you. And, and, I, and I think, you know, one of the things, obviously, you know, Didi, is that it, it's not like – you're a, a 21, 22 year old goalkeeper, you know, who's, who's fresh, fresh. No. And I, I don't mean, I mean that in a respectful yeah, way. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean that in a respectful way. in the fact that like, you, they, you know, you're an established goalkeeper, a veteran presence coming into a new, 
onto a new new team. Okay, should I just stop talking today? It's <laughs> fine. It's got. It's fine. I gotta warm up the knees a little extra now, but it's fine. <laughs> Look, it takes me an hour to warm up. I literally show up at the field, and it's like an hour before I'm even playing like men's league. By the way, uh, over in uh, in India right now, uh, JD Day says, "Hey, Didi, greetings. You know what the meaning of your name, Didi, in Hindi is? <laughs> Elder sister." Uh, and so um, I think that's a positive. I think I, I'm that kind of just went into what you're talking about. <laughs> right? I think that seeped into my subconscious <laughs> because I saw that comment come through. <laughs> um, oh, man, my gosh. No, but I mean, what I, what, stand -up look, comic. what I mean is, is when you, have a, when you have an expansion team and, you know, obviously, you know, you're developing new players and everything like that, coming into that environment as, an, as a veteran goalkeeper, that's a great that's a great place to be as a veteran goalkeeper because you can immediately establish a culture because you've been there before. You've seen what it takes to get to that it, next level. So that's the thing. Like some people are actually surprised that this is my 10th season in the league. And I've kind of you really learn a lot when you sit back and you watch. All the goalkeepers that I've been able to train with, I've learned so much from them. Um, so like I said, like this entire experience, I'm still riding with. Um, so for it to be my 10th season and for this to be my first opportunity to be a starting goalkeeper, it's something that I'm going to hold on to. Yeah. But I also, that's a lot. That's a lot. And, you know, and Susky and I, we've talked about this. It's just the depth of the league, you know, like that is how, that's how, that's how deep the pool goes in this league when you're talking about, you know, you can, there can be goalkeepers that are number threes on an mm -hmm. NWSL team that would be starting in most of the world on a club. It, yeah. I mean, my career, I started as a number four um, in a position where I never traveled. I wasn't even signed at one point and it's taken me four years to actually get a contract. Um, so after four years, a lot of players I think would have either stopped or went overseas and played. So I think for me that that's something I really had to sit with. Like that, that shows a lot of resiliency within myself and a lot of determination to prove to people that I should be here and I should be playing in this league. But but I, I think also like and Suski and I we've talked about this. The fact that you did go overseas and you did play, mm -hmm. I think was massive for your development. And I think that's how you. All, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how you kind of got on the radar with with Bosnia you know, to get in the international pool and everything like that was, was, was from making that move. Yeah. I had a, I was blessed enough to have a connection. My goalkeeping coach in Virginia, cause that's uh, my hometown. He actually knew Asmir Begovic and Asmir used to be the second string at Chelsea and he had connections into Bosnia. So that was kind of my in. Um, but Sweden was a amazing opportunity, by the way, beautiful country. I uh -huh. want to go back and just visit without soccer. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it was a great opportunity. And when I came back, I played with Spirit for three, four years, and that was my hometown. So that was that was kind of when I got my first contract. Yeah. Go ahead, Sask. No, I'm just ahead. saying, yeah, I think getting over to Sweden, getting that game time in and playing time, and yes, it's an absolutely beautiful country. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, been there too. Uh, that uh, I think that does make a difference. And, you know, and the, it does say something about, your character and your wherewithal that you 10 years in the league and you are right after four years, a lot of players, they, a lot of players would have moved on just even with the salaries. That's an issue in itself. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm not playing. I'm sitting in fourth. I'm not making any money. I have to, am I moving on with my life? And that's something that, you know, has always been an issue with women's pro soccer is because salaries have been so low and everything you, you the turnover rate was huge. And so to be able to yeah. go over to Sweden, to be to go able to go over to other countries, get those games under your belt, come back in and now be the starter for angel city is huge. Yeah. And, and by the way, I mean, I think you know, one of the really cool things is, like, you know, what a cool environment, you know, and I don't want to make this an infomercial for Angel City, despite the fact we have, uh, you know, a co-owner okay, on, <laughs> on the podcast. And, you know, I think Julie's actually, you know, tuning in and watching. So maybe she'd be happy about that. But um, but uh, but, you know, you're talking about going to an expansion team, but they're treating it like they're an established club. I mean, everything from just, you know, you know, the facilities, you know, where, where you guys are, you know, tra training out, you know, um, you know, over, um, over in the T.O. Agora Hills area. And, and then obviously, you know, Bank of California. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you really can't ask for a better stadium than that. Talk about a stadium, huh? Yeah. 
Um, I actually, like, I'm not afraid to admit this because it's already on camera, but I walked into the stadium um, on purpose. I decided to delay my visit to bank because I didn't want to see it until our home opener. Um, and I walked in and I started crying because it was like <laughs> all these years of 10 seasons, all these years of questioning, do I really want to continue with this? Um, and I told Dan this last year. I wasn't going to play last year. I wanted to retire and I was just like, I'm really just mentally, I don't know if I can do this again. And how everything happened and unfolded, I don't know what happened exactly, but it's just, I think it was my path. I was meant to kind of go in this direction and it has prepped me to play in front of 15 to 20,000 plus fans a game. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty amazing. <laughs> The energy, well, so, and everything. It's amazing. It is. Were you, Suski, over the, the, those first matches, were you in Were you in the box or were you in the, did you go well, out to the crowd? That first one, and... we were on the field. Okay. When, she, for, when you guys first walk out, we were all down on the field. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, are you asking me to be like bougie or something? I was like, and then, <laughs> I was in, I was in kind of a VIP area in a box. I mean, I was kind of bouncing around saying hi to everybody. They were, you know, so that's what I do. <laughs> like, it's fine. It's I'm like amongst you, the people too. I, I wasn't, you, you. Banging, I wasn't banging on one of the drums. I didn't get yeah. asked to, but I had no problem banging on one of the drums. We'll get you to do that tomorrow night. I have no problem. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Didi, there's a question here before we get into the topic here from uh, Tariq. And it goes, as a second generation immigrant to the U.S., I was wondering if Didi speaks Bosnian fluently and if she hopes to get in the Bosnian squad for the September World Cup qualifier. Um, I do speak Bosnian fluently. So thank you to my parents that both drilled that into me. Um, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, as for getting back into the squad, that I don't know. I'm leaving it up in the air right now, but I'm currently just enjoying my time. Um, in Angel City. Um, I would love to get back in with the squad, but a few changes need to be made. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll leave, we'll leave it at th that, uh, Tariq. I think, you know, uh, one of the, one of the great things about, uh, about this experience right here is that they're, you know, regardless of what, what the decisions are made and everything like that and what the, what, what the environment's like and everything like that is that the body of work that you're producing right now, this year is going to lead to whatever opportunities you feel are appropriate for your career. That's probably how, you know, I yeah. would elaborate on that. Um, all right, let's get, let's get into the topic guys. Uh, so today's topic is, uh, is, is tracking and, um, yeah. Why am I having trouble talking today? Processing pictures, processing pictures and tracking the ball. Uh, Didi, for people like myself who don't understand goalkeeper terminology, apparently, uh, what do we mean by tracking the ball? Reading the play, understanding the game, tracking the ball. If there's a service that comes in, how do I put my body in a position to line up and follow the path and the flight of the ball to put myself in the best position to make a world-class save or make something difficult look very easy. Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a, a very simplified way of doing it. You know, I think sometimes Saskia, you know, people try to get a little too complicated when they try to explain something, especially to a youth goalkeeper. And I think Didi just made it very eloquent right there on how simple that, that, that topic is. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, to <laughs> piggyback off that. I think it's like goalkeeping. It looks complex, but honestly, if you keep it so simple, it like expands everything. Yeah. And and I think, uh, you know, one of the things, too, is that, you know, when we talk about pictures and everything like that, Dee, Dee like when, when we talk about processing pictures, you know, there's so many different things going on in that moment. And one, one thing that Daniel says about you is that you're very good. Uh, at being involved in processing in real time rather than playing concept. There's a lot of goalkeepers out there that are kind of conceptualizing what is taking place and they're kind of guessing what the next move is going to be, but you're actually present in the moment and then you don't react until you have to react. So Dan has been able to put our, put us in um, great situations of scenarios that could potentially happen in games. And our training sessions are built based off of chaos so in a game, when it's so chaotic, we're the calmest player on the field. Um, so for me, I actually am an overanalyzer. And before I get the ball, I'm already trying to read what happened or what's going to happen before I get the ball. And I think that's what's also helped me 
succeed and play these um, passes and splitting defenders and things like that. Yeah, you know, um, you know, sp- speaking of that, Suskia, I think we, we you talked about so obviously you had a long conversation with Dan when when he first came came over to Angel City, and you know, I've been watching some of Dan's sessions lately, and 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 I don't know about you, Suskia, but I think you know, seeing how everyone is involved in the activities. It's not right. just the goalkeeper that's that's in, quote unquote, you know, in the action, but everybody else is involved. And, and does that, you know, Suskia, as yourself, as a goalkeeper, does that help you learn these pictures because you're involved in the actual actions that lead to those scenarios? Yeah, of course. Again, it's got to be as game realistic as possible. And that um, the more you see that in training and stuff, and if you, it is chaos, you know, where are most goals scored from and what's going on in the box and who are making runs. And, you know, especially at this level, gone are the days when it's so regimented and it's like, here comes the pass, here comes this, and here comes a shot and maybe there's a follow-up. And it's just, you have to emulate, emulate what's going on in the game. And the more you do that, the calmer the goalkeeper can be when it's happening in the game and the better focused and picture that you're going to have of every situation and how to deal with it yeah yeah you know it's what and by the way Didi, feel free to step in anytime otherwise i'm just going to keep talking uh yeah no i was gonna i I was just going to add it a lot of our sessions are built through decision making um so dan won't tell us sometimes what to do because he wants us to explore it and choose a decision because in a game that decision will probably be the difference between breaking lines and going up higher on the pitch yeah. No, and that's 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 amazing because why are you and because there are multiple there are multiple choices in a game, it's not just one thing. There's not just one decision. And why are you making this decision? How is it affecting the team? Like was was it the right one in this in this? But like I said, there are multiple choices, and yeah. you have to explore all of them. Yeah, and, you know, and then one one thing I want to kind of say about that too is that I think. And Didi, correct me if, if, if you feel differently, but I feel that a lot of times youth goal goalkeepers overcorrect themselves when it comes to positioning. Like they're over, they over move. I, I just had a, a young goalkeeper yesterday. Uh, well, not that young. I mean, 14, 15 years old. But it was like, dude, you're out of position every time because you're so ahead of the play. And I, I and I, I like the fact that you're hustling and you're working hard and you're tracking and everything like that. But you have to move at the speed of the game. Sometimes the game moves slower than you're moving. Our movements have to be very subtle. Um, we can't be one bouncing up and down twenty four seven. And also, the biggest thing that I think a lot of goalkeepers have issues with, and I had this mistake in one of the games. A player touched from her right foot off to her right side. I moved with one big step and she mm-hmm. came back. She came back. And I've learned from there, it's not a big step that I take. If they touch it wide, it's a small adjustment, mm-hmm. a half a step, not even. Um, and that changes the game completely. Yeah, you don't, I just, you don't have to move a lot. No, I tell my goalkeepers, I'm like, they're micro steps. It's all micro movements. Yeah. It's mini adjustments. As long as your, your depth and positioning is proper and stuff like that, off your line where you are then every movement is just micro movements because if you're taking big huge steps and big huge movements you're going to get caught in transition and you're going to be off, your 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 timing's going to be off period right yeah. right yeah you know not not that I'm like the world's gift to goalkeeping or whatever but I I stepped in for a demo yesterday and I just showed this goalkeeper how just a slight tilt of my head and my shoulder was enough in this moment. And I was able to make a successful action that he was having trouble with. And I'm a hundred years old compared to him and, and not warmed up and everything. So if I can do it, you know, a, a, you know, world-class athlete, you know, or, or a upcoming world-class athlete, like, you know, this young man right here c- can do it. And I think, I think sometimes I feel like a lot of young goalkeepers, Didi feel like they have to do more because they physically can, and so they think, well, then I have to lay it all out on the line. But in reality, it's 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 more than you need. No, le- less is more is what I've heard and what I've learned from my tenth season in the league. Just keep it simple. Like I said, that is the most. If it seems basic, it's really okay. Yeah, it's like it's the simplest of things. The smallest movements, like you just said, Mike, like that small head tilt. That's the difference maker. 
Uh-huh. And, the, and, and it's scary how technical and tactical goalkeeping is. It's very technical. We don't have to do things at 100 miles per hour. How can you do something quick in five seconds, though? Yeah. And then you're relaxed before the shot comes in. Yeah, you know, and, and I, speaking speaking of that, you know, I, uh, Daniel was bringing up, and he I had never heard this term before, so uh, I don't know if it's a Daniel Ball special or if this is a term that's that's out there in the world. But I feel like I have big shoes to fill with Dan being on here <laughs> before me. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing fine. You're doing amazing. You're doing you're doing you're doing amazing. I let's see him take some pictures like you. Um, he he calls your positioning quiet positioning versus loud positioning. Um, what? What, what, does he, what does he mean by that in your language? I'm not bouncing a lot. So before I worked with Dan, um, a shot before a shot would come in, you see me bouncing a lot. And now before a shot comes in, I move across, I set, and I go. It's the smallest thing. So that to me is what he means by quiet. I'm not bouncing. Um, I'm not on a pogo stick. I'm yeah. just chill. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching, I was doing an ID camp and I was watching some kids, you know, and obviously they're with goalkeeper trainers and stuff and um, and the, their movement into their set position and, and such a big, I guess I'd like the term loud. I like, I like this, like a loud movement into a set position or a bounce or like a huge step. And I'm just like, guys, it's just a, and again, it's just a quiet step and set and that's mm-hmm. it. And, and don't get caught in all of that action and all that motion because, again, and Mike, you know this, we've shown clips of this where you even in the men's pro league in the EPL and everywhere you see guys that are like doing that big, loud movement into a set position and they're in the air still and we're talking about really analyzing it and the ball's already been hit. Yeah. And and that is the difference between making that save. And, yeah, my hands, I did a spray tan in my hands. <laughs> If you're wondering why my hands are orange, it's why. Shannon made me try it just because I had a farmer's tan and I had to even it out. Didn't know if you were like eating eating barbe- barbecue chips or something like that. What was going on? <laughs> I just wanted you to know. That's what Getting I ready for Fourth of July, you started early. Well, so. I had a really bad farmer's tan, so uh, I don't know. I tried it. Oh, oh black, my God. black girls I, I, doing spray tans. What's going to happen next? <laughs> At least you're uh, tan. There you go. Goalkeepers are completely covered every day. Yeah. Oh my God. Well. Oh yeah. I mean. I, by by the way, I love it. I love it. These these the, the little the little ones. I had this little one uh, recently, and they basically showed up, and it, <laughs> the kid is wearing like head. It's like a hundred degrees, and he's wearing like <laughs> head to toe like Storelli protective gear. He's got yeah. like the full on pads, you know, and like the long jersey. And hey, like, start him young. young. If you want to have a long career, start him young. <laughs> protect your body, protect your skin. <laughs> well, because you also don't know the type of field he's coming from, Mike. Like, you know, he could be coming from a horrible field that he's playing on. I'm just saying. Or no, turf. No, you're- no, you're or absolutely turf. right. Oh well, well, that's the thing. It's that the, the yeah. poor kids on the turf now. Oh my gosh, yeah. some of these tu- some of these turfs. It's not like the the amazing quality, you know, uh, facilities that that you two uh, have been able to play on. You know, like there, this turf has been you know dug up for five <laughs> years, so there's basically hey, this look, much I turf left. I played pro in Japan, and my field, my practice field was dirt. So. <laughs> It was dirt that we had this giant rake. It was like a metal heavy rake. And we'd put two of the little Japanese players on it. And me and Tammy would pull the rake across the 18 to crunch up the dirt. So it wasn't so hard for me to dive on. So I've been there and that was pro. So, you know. <laughs> we've come a long way. Don't we've worry come about a it. Long way. We've come a long way. <laughs> um, I, I want to say, say this, though, though uh, you know, real quick before we move on kind of to the next thing right here. Is that, like, I noticed that, like, and this is something that I've noticed is like, if I can notice a goalkeeper, especially during wide service, if I can notice their movement, then they're all over, then they're all over the place. I shouldn't be able to see the tracking of the goalkeeper. And I, I've noticed that the goalkeepers, especially in wide service, who are so good at handling crosses, I, I literally don't even notice how they got into position to get that cross. It's just, it just, it just happened because they're so fluid with the movement of the game. Yeah, I, I would also I want to tell people like the further the ball is out wide, you really don't need to be near your near post. You can be more central because you can protect that space. You can defend that area in behind your back line. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, that's where those micro movements come in. Like there is no reason to be near near post. You have the time. 
even if it's a missed kick or something, you have the time to cover that space. But if you are in a proper position, more central, um, then it's just small movements to cover more area. You know, if you're out of position and too far near post to cover to cover the majority of area you want to, is going to be huge. So yeah. you're already out of position. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, g uh, getting in, uh, getting in position, uh, can we can we start sharing some clips of Didi and breaking yes. this down? Let's do this. <laughs> Didi's like, oh, what did I get into? I don't know if I want to wow. get into this right now. I yet. didn't know this. Right, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we weren't going to share this information with you earlier on. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let's see here. Can everybody see this? All right, beautiful. Okay, so we're going to start with this right here. I'm sure you'll remember uh, this play. This is the 41st minute. Balls around the top of the 18 possession. I think it's lost by page. Uh, Lauren uh, Millier, she strips the ball. You immediately go from supporting position to defending the area and then into defending the goal in one action, which I think is really important for a lot of young kids to see how they're all kind of linked together. Um, fantastic awareness because then McDonald, oh, look at that save right there. So let's, let's start from the very top. And can you just break down what's going on her first here, Didi? Yeah. Well, first of all, I... From a technique standpoint, I love the ball that I played out the page, but I needed to give her a little bit more direction. Um, so as a team, we did speak about this scenario, but as she loses it at that point, it's like I'm in no man's land and I got to get myself to the best position where I could do something with the ball. Yeah. yeah. Play for like they, no, no, knowing this scenario, I think I know oh, it's not going to be pretty. So this is one of those <laughs> where it's yeah. like, you're just doing this and you're hoping for the best. But what I love though, is that you are aware because you were originally, you're in a supporting place for being in possession and then your team immediately loses possession in an area. But and I, I think a lot of young kids need to see this because it's going to happen in games and it's not like, well, I gave the ball. I did my job. Now they lost possession. That's on them. No, you have to be able to go and defend that area immediately. So you go into well, at the Yeah, at the end of the day, I don't want people to score on me. But number yeah. two, I know how um, at Angel City we want to play. It's a very high risk. So I'm always, if you watch us play, me, Brittany, and Maya, all three of us, we play this high because we're kind of like that other center back. We enjoy the ball at our feet. We want to break lines and kind of help our team to push numbers higher. Um, so knowing how we want to play, I think we all agree that it's, it's a bit of a high risk scenario every time. Yeah. And then you come through and then here, I, I want to talk about this right here. It's Cause this is, this is a mistake that I think a lot of young, young goalkeepers make there is that they keep moving, they mm -hmm. keep moving. But the second that you see that, that Jessica's ready to strike, you're set. Maybe it's not the best position in the world, but you have to be set in order to be able to make an action. Remember, I always tell you, it's better to be set and out of position and moving because mm -hmm. you can give yourself a chance to make that save. Yeah, and I agree with you, Mike. A lot of kids would keep running here, keep trying to and overcompensate, to go too mm -hmm. far near post or not control their body. But having the where, like seeing the picture, which is what we're talking about, seeing, okay, she's ready to strike. I've got to get myself set. Whatever yeah. happens... Yeah. I got to get myself set to give myself a chance to react, period. Because it's a matter of you're more balanced and you're in more control. Because right yeah. now, this right here is chaos to me. It's a matter of there's no control here other than I can kind of make that control within my body. And I'm just right. going to stop and hope for the best and hopefully make a more plus save or do something. But, but I think that, that that's the thing, too, is that I want everyone to notice that actually on the action. So when when she strikes the ball right here, let's see if I can rewind it a little bit right here so when she strikes the ball do you notice how the shoot you know for, for everybody who's watching right now notice how the shoot she goes directly into the space mm -hmm. and basically you stay you stay big and you stay in front of the space as opposed to going negative in the space opening up that gap i think a lot a lot of goalkeepers here they drop shoulder they expose the gap when they go down and then the ball just slots underneath them yeah. so i think it's yeah. a massive save on your part dd thank you appreciate it yeah. Sask, anything else you want to add? No, I'm good. Okay. I just love I'm watching like, this. I'm good. I just I love watching this because it looks like a <laughs> it looks like a save that I have to make in men's league because we lose the possession of the ball like this all the time. <laughs> this I gotta very come Sunday on. league. I gotta this is a Sunday league. On. This is a Sunday see. league type of play. This is a Sunday <laughs> league type of play. That is that is uh that is for sure. Um, all right, so we'll move on from uh from here. So okay, so let's uh let's move on to this uh this play right here. Oh, look at that! 
That's just a little bit of tough love. <laughs> just a little bit of, uh, all right. So let's, let's see here. Uh, we'll go on. Uh, you brought this one out of the archives from last season. I did. This is, this is a, this is when you were playing, uh, over at Gotham. Uh, essentially the ball yep. is played from the top of midfield. It's a flick on breakaway. Some Charlie. I remember yep. this one. <laughs> She's got a little bit of pace on her, but it's, see, here's the thing. It's in, far in front of her. And how many young goalkeepers in this scenario right here? So let's just shoot out yep. and try to get to that ball. And there's no way in, no way in heck you're going to get to that ball, Didi. So instead you come out fast approach, but then you slow your arrival and hold. And it's just that little touch. It's a great reaction right there. I think. It's yeah. Just, yeah it's like, I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to come flying out. We say this to young kids all the time. That's what she's hoping for. Force her to beat you. Like Michelle Akers always says, make me beat you. I also have a defender breathing down my neck and everything. So yeah. stand me up because I have to make a quick decision as an attacker. I don't have all day. And if you give me, you answer the question for me by come flying out and selling yourself, then you're making it easy for me. But if I'm, if you're controlling your body, being big, make her beat you. Yeah. For me, this is like, from a personal standpoint, I rely a lot on my reflexes um, and also reading the game. I know Simone is very fast. And by the way, I'm so happy to be playing with her now and not against her. <laughs> um, but I knew she was fast and I'm like, okay, me being a sloth, I'm not going to get out there. Um, but I also rely on my reflexes. And also in this scenario, this is a straight up 1v1. And it's just a matter of how much space can you take away from the goal frame and make her job more difficult. I, I always tell I always tell young and I was literally saying this to a young goalkeeper yesterday, a different young goalkeeper, not the same one uh, on the positioning thing. But I was saying is that if you basically if they're making such a long trek like this, they've had so much time to think you're kind of at the advantage because now they're they're thinking about three different options by the time they get to you as opposed to when they're in short space and then they just have to go on instinct type of thing. So you're kind of at an advantage if you just hold your position right here and let her yeah. make a decision and mm -hmm. you react. Yeah, I to actually, it. I actually remember this. I was out of, of the goal because it was a free kick. There was a foul and I hit it from outside the box. And that's why you see me kind of come from the side of the screen. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where are you coming middle. from? <laughs> yeah, we had, we, we lost the 50, 50 battle and they countered right away. Yeah. Yeah. And then I love, boom, and then just and just that touch. And again, I, I again, just getting that body there and just shooting it and just getting a little bit on it just to redirect the ball. That's all you have to do. And 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 I think um, you know um, Chris Sharp over at Colorado Rapids. He always talks about effective goalkeeping. It's it's more about being effective in a moment than being technically clean. I think, and I used to be a, a culprit of this, DD, is that I used to be, especially with, with my goalkeepers, is, is that I would be like, oh, it's got to be technically clean, technical, technical, technical. And it's great to train technique, but in, in the game, it's, it's very rarely going to be technically clean. So what's yeah. going to be effective in the moment is so much more important. I 100% agree with that. Mm -hmm. There are days where at practice, it's a technical day. That's where I'm going to focus on my technique, my positioning, and everything. But like you said, Mike, in a game, you don't have time to be like, oh, I'm going to hold on to this because your decision making is a split second. It can be the best thing in the world. It can be the worst thing. Either way, both are talked about. Um, so for me, it's whatever decision I choose right away, I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. Um, I want to bring this up right here because uh, I think this was uh, this was recently right against O.L. Rain. I think. Yeah. This was recently. So, uh, DR King, she's dribbles and kind of cuts back at the middle of the top of the 18. And, and I want everyone to watch kind of, we'll, we'll watch it. Let's watch it through basically, but look at this movement. True. Look at that shave and that parry, but let's go back to here because I want everyone to see the movements by Didi as she takes these little small movements, tracking, staying within the ball line and making the successful parry. So she cuts it inside. Look at these little movements by Didi just to get that touch. But it's, if you play it in real time, look at the little steps. Shift, shift, step, boom. Yeah. Just that little bit right there. And I, so many goalkeepers are ah, flying all over the place right there. Yeah. And, and, and you just recognized how you just needed a little bit of movement to be able to get yourself not only the momentum, but also in a position with the ball line so that you can play it into a safe area. 
Well, you guys are hyping me up too much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can show some goal. I mean, I can go on Weiss and show some goals. Oh, no, no, no. I feel good going into Portland tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this one, I mean, this is also like we're down one nothing here, and I forgot what minute of the game it was. I think I want to say it was very late. High 80s, maybe towards the 90th minute. Um, I, I personally, like, this is huge. If I don't make this save, you're now down 2 nothing. Your team has a larger gap to fill. So this is still an opportunity for the team to kind of gas to the pedal and let's get going. Yeah, and a save yeah. like that towards the end of the game when you're only down one nothing also like pumps your team up. <laughs> yeah, and these are the types of scenarios when Z King takes her touch off to the right. Like I've been at fault for taking that huge step and then them hitting it back to my right and I'm screwed at that point. Yep. So I've learned a lot from see if you can keep it very small, small steps controlled and hope for the best. Right. Cause and if I, she cuts this back, you, you are on it. Your positioning's yeah. mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. yep. And I love, yeah, that's a great point Suskia right there in regards to her shape. Her shape is her so shape's balanced. Fine. It doesn't matter which side she goes to. She's got it. Yeah. That's br that's brilliant. We're look here. At, look at he, we better be pumping you up. <laughs> yeah. I'm one of your owners. I'm like, he's not, he's not allowed to say a single negative thing today. <laughs> that's a big match tomorrow. I mean, if, if if Bella was on, we'd be we'd be pumping up Portland. No, I'm totally kidding. Uh, wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wasn't she? Wait, who did we she, have on? And I had all my uh, Angel City stuff. It was, it was Bella. It was Bella. We had Bella, Bella on. And she, and we were like, and last time you guys played, and it was like my banner behind me at home. And everything. <laughs> like, seriously? And I was like, Oh yeah. Well, just it like, you know, <laughs> it, lit it literally looked what like she was, she was trolling her. Oh my god! I was god. like, oh man, I didn't even like. I forgot it was. I was like, oh, oh well, deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to bring this up right here before we move on from this play right here. A lot of a lot of goalkeepers they panic in this situation right here, and they go, oh, I need to be a little bit more over towards towards my near post. Um because they don't trust their defender to cover. And I love the fact that you're willing to be a little bit, a little bit farther out um, and trust that she's got that area covered. Yeah. I, I mean, we always want to force them wide. Um, but like I said, you can't always control everything in a game. And then when you have forwards that are quick and they're dribbling at you full speed, it's difficult to do that. Um, but I'm just trying to do what I do best. And I'm a shot stopper, and I know that's my strength when it comes to games. Um, and there, you, I mean, that's just the basic save to me. No, it's yeah. great. Yeah, basic save. Jeez, Louise, man, I, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta improve. I gotta improve my game. All right, all right. Here we're gonna go. We're gonna go Louisville right here. All right. I think this is the 81st minute. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is Portland. Oh, this is Portland. Oh, this is Portland. Yeah. Okay, my bad. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, this is fifth minute. This was Sophia Smith play, right? One-on-one. -on -one. Wide yeah. edge. Basically, edge of the box cuts towards the near post. Oh, this is Christine Sinclair. Oh, my gosh. Woo! I'd be terrified if Christine Sinclair was at, at me at point-blank range right there. Uh, let's walk this through. So, Didi, explain basically first on, let's start with the very top of the picture right here. Yeah, so in this scenario, this is something Dan always grills into us. Um, the question is, can she score from here? And no, she can't. So that's why my positioning is a bit off the post. Um, so, but as she starts dribbling, you'll see she's in a, she starts getting closer and closer to a, an area where I have to protect mm -hmm. the space from my post to a cutback scenario. And I've always been taught four yards outside of the post is my goal when I'm dealing with a bit of a cutback scenario. Um, <laughs> hey, Dan, thanks. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> no, Dan, like, she cannot score. <laughs> like you should tell um, him to jump on. That'd be funny. Oh my so God. If you let it play out, the closer she gets, I then have to turn my hips and close and protect a bit of a cutback scenario. But she then, I then realize it's further away from me. So in this moment, it's the first phase of a goal um, and it's turn get set, right. And it's like I said, I rely on my reactions. Um, and that was it. 
So right here, see, see, but there's a slight adjustment again in this cutback scenario. How many times I've seen young goalkeepers fly across the goal because they're expecting a back post slot. And mm -hmm. so they're flying across and then she just hits it near post right there. And there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, we actually, momentum. we train this a lot. Um, every match day minus one, um, we do one, two, three, one volley, middle volley, third volley, which is on the other side of the goal. So when you think about it, this right here is the first volley I'm taking. So I, she passes it. And if you can pause it when I make my first turn. Right there. Yeah. At that point, that's my first volley that we get. Um, and then if that was to then move towards the PK, I would shift. That's volley number two. If it moves further to the back post, three. Um, so we actually train that. And yeah. then you've got this, this unannounced, this is this. So this is the second volley right here, right here. No, that would be no, this, this will be the first one. So we set each other, okay. Okay. Yeah. We set each other up three across the six, one okay. on near the front post middle and then back. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I like right here. Also, one of the things too, is that again, you said, you know, reactions are so important right there. I like the fact that your body naturally goes shortest distance to the ball is a foot save right here and not to try to go down to the ground because that ball would probably go right underneath. Yeah. You, you have, I, right I, you have no time. There's no time. So it's, these are where there's no technique. You don't need to collapse. Right. From like kind of kick the foot out. It's more so just kick the foot out in front of you. And that's a leg save kick save. Kick the yeah. ball out of the net. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at that stretch right there. Look at the flexibility. Oh boy, that would that would tear that would that would tear my hamstring. She's uh, feeling it, man. She should, if, if only the game was tonight. I know. <laughs> we got to give her twenty four hours to just bask everything. in the glow of this before tomorrow. She's gonna be so hyped and so pumped for it. Mike can send you the edited, and you can just keep replaying it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna be like, hype, hype, hype. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Coach, coach has a comment here that he wants to that he wants to throw up here. And so he goes. Let's also highlight how square her hips are and how Didi is playing the first ball, then the second ball, not just playing the ball across the box. Absolutely, coach. <laughs> oh, Dan, thank you. <laughs> Dan's going to be going over this over this podcast like it's like it's film footage. Like he's like, he's going to be breaking down and cutting down this podcast for tomorrow. <laughs> um, I, I do want to say one thing about this play right here too is that the way that you shot your leg was also to cover the space as opposed to going to the ball. So the ball has nowhere to go, but to be blocked in front of the post, no matter what part of your body it hits, it's going to go in front because you're not going negative here. Your leg is right in front of the post right there. And I don't know if that was an intentional thing or if that, or if that was just kind of coincidental, but I think it's <laughs> yeah, I gotta be honest with you. That's literally me just trusting my reactions. Um, and we actually, we train a lot of kick saves. Um, and you think you shouldn't have to train that, but these scenarios right here are the reason why we train these kick saves, these spreads, and just little details that end up being big. And first five minutes of the game, this right here could have been one nothing easily. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, look at how oh, she, I, I wouldn't want that stare from her. <laughs> <laughs> She's just never going to stop, is she? She's just going to go. She'll be she'll be 70 yeah, years old still healthy. It's it's scary how good she is. I I have a lot of respect for Sink. Absolutely. Oh oh I mean, gosh. I played against her. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, okay, Mike. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't I'm just mean kidding. Like I'm just kidding. No, but that's how long she's she's going to play forever. <laughs> um I want to bring up this play right here. Um, and this is a wide service play that from kind of like to the lay person, like this looks like nothing, but when you actually see what happens here, um, a lot's going on. And when we talk about your, you being quiet and you doing as little as you need to, um, I think this is a layoff ball at the end line to the wide channel to Savannah DeMello who lifts a high ball into the box. That's kind of a weird ball. I hate so those. Oh yeah. I, it's just like, it's staying up there and you're just like, Oh boy, this is, and when it has like that weird spin on mm -hmm, it, <laughs> mm -hmm. you'd so think let's, that'd let's, be easier. 
Well, that's the thing. I think a lot of, especially, and I think the play-by-play people, they just like, they don't even make a comment because they're just like, well, that's just a floated ball in the box that the goalkeeper right. receives right. or whatever. Um, but you're so patient with your movement. You stay behind until the drop, which is why you're successful. And this is a play I've seen at the youth level get scored on so many times. And this is why, because what you did, which is great, is you're right, Mike. You waited in place so you could get your momentum to go up and collect the ball properly. And and instead of being underneath the ball and trying to jump straight up and catch it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you come, you still get forward momentum. You're still coming up and meeting the ball at its highest point where you see a lot of young players get under the point, the highest point. And so all they can do is jump straight up. They can't get any momentum to project up. So here you can get up and the ball, what hits the crossbar or it right. gets all flustered and like all messed up and goes in the goal. So you have right. to maintain right. your position to be able to still come and attack the ball. Yeah. Um, this kind of what I alluded to earlier, this is the scenario where we always ask ourselves, can they score? You don't need to be uh, for other goalkeepers. This is where we don't need to be on our near post. Cause right here you see that I move now more centrally cause she's wider away from the goal, yeah. which means mm-hmm. I want to yeah. defend that space that's in behind my back line. You know, and you know, Mike, I had a big, I had an issue with one of my goalkeepers at UCLA that kept doing that. And I, and I kind of, we had to retrain it at her. I'm like, why? And I had to show her, why are you so close to your near post? (laughs) You are, you're taking yourself out of the play. You're making this difficult for yourself. Like she can't score. Like all she can do is serve this ball. And even if it's a missed service and it comes into the goal, you can still make the adjustment and make the save. I, I, I always tell young goalkeepers this to say, you have to play the, the, the laws of percentages, you know, and the chances that they can score from there are this, but the chances that they can serve the ball to the back post are And you're this. out of position and you're scrambling mm-hmm. to get across are a lot higher. Yeah, of course. Right. But again, so, it goes back to what we said, micro movements. If you're in a position where all, your adjustments are so little and you can cover so much more because of it, then that's what you want to do. All right. Yeah. Now, is this ball bending? This ball's bending away towards the towards the crossbar, this right? Doing. <laughs> yeah, it started. It started getting really close to the crossbar. So that was another thing where I was like, "This might be one of those that my hands are up and it just nicks the crossbar, and then it drops right in the middle of my stick." Um, mm-hmm. But like I said, it had like that weird spin on it, and I personally don't like those because it's like it's hanging up there, and you're just like, "Can you just drop, please?" <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, no. I hate I hate those because it allows time for the other team to get underneath the ball. Right. So now all of a sudden, instead of it being a simple handle, it's four people in my in my way that I have to jump for, jump for on this high ball. But, that's it's kind why, of floating around. but it's why you don't get underneath it too early. It's why yeah. you still have the ability to use your momentum to jump up and through. Because if people got around you, you will still want to come up and clear um, clear them as well. If you're battling and going straight up, you're gonna have a problem. Right. Yeah. I love, I love this. Well, well, good. Well, we're gonna we're gonna take all those down so that so, so Didi can just just remember all you know, the. You can just listen to the podcast in your earbuds while you're warming up tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I do I do want to ask this right here uh, as we start wrapping up and and Didi, thanks for taking the time because I know I know it's match day minus one, so you know you got a lot going on to prepare for for tomorrow. Obviously, you're in the thick of the season and everything like that. Um, I got nothing to do tonight. I'm chilling. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Well, I was going to give you, I was, I, I was giving you an out. I was giving you an out. And next, next, all right, I got seven watching. more clips. <laughs> like I, I just, I just got to be asleep by seven thirty. Grandma Didi has to keep kicking. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I, I want to ask you this. Um, if there's any, any goalkeepers out there uh, that are having trouble understanding the difference between tracking and moving, because I think that's, that's a question that I brought up to this 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 fourteen year old goalkeeper yesterday, because he thinks moving is tracking, as opposed to understanding the tracking is more of with the eyes, and the movement is just the action from the tracking. Yeah. So, I, if I can explain this from a crossing standpoint, when crosses come in, I don't have to move my body. It's more so if the cross is coming in for my right, my head moves with the ball. And as it's getting ready to drop, that's when I start moving my body. So like you said, Mike, the eyes is where it's tracking. Movement happens, in my opinion, after, once you've already processed the flight of the ball. Yep. 
I, I love I love the way you said that. Suska, anything you want to add to that? Nope. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Mike drop. Mike drop. Mike drop right there. And I want uh young Josiah to listen to this podcast. <laughs> Um, oh boy, I just did I just call him out on the sh I shouldn't do that. That was terrible. Uh, man, we're gonna lose fans. Uh, anyway, uh, 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 another Josiah was uh, was who I was referring oh, to. If he... Mike, you're just making it worse now. I am. I am just making it worse. I'm digging a hole. I'm digging a hole. Just stop. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll just stop. All right, I, I will just stop and I will just go on to plugs. How about that? There you uh, go. All right, so we'll go on to uh, the, the first off, the number one plug, uh, Didi, for anybody who's watching the show live right now uh, instead of the recorded version. Uh, tell us a little bit about tomorrow's match. What? Because uh, they can they can check it out at Bank to California Stadium if they're in the L.A. area, right? Please come to Bank of California Stadium tomorrow. Um, we're playing Portland, and I'm excited because I always enjoy playing Portland. Um, but it just – just come and join us. The atmosphere, the stadium, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful arena. And when we see diverse people come together, that's what I love the most. Yeah. I, I absolutely, I absolutely love that. And I just honestly, you know, first off, I think what's going on in the league with the West coast expansion with all the teams now, you know, not just the Pacific Northwest, but now going down the coast, uh, these rivalries that are being built and they're building, being built organically because of situations that have happened in games. And I, and, and Suske, I know, you know, you, you can attest for this is that rivalries are healthy. There's nothing wrong with rivalries. As long as they're, as long as they're, they're competitive and they're fun and they're safe, they're, they're great. Yeah, they're good for everybody. The fans, the cities, everybody. You know, so su <laughs> supporter groups for Portland, uh, yeah, Rose City, uh, please uh, be respectful. Uh, if you're a bank to California, uh, we know Rebellion 99 is going to be out in force. Uh, Didi, if anybody wants to know more about what you're doing uh, with your with your photography and all that, where's the best place for them to connect with you? Um, Instagram at D-I-D-E-E-D-S, Didi. Um, my website is also on there with most of my page is mostly photography. I actually don't post That's much cool. about soccer. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of an, an escape for me. Um, so yeah, on my Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. And if you want to reach out to Suskia Weber, she will be uh, out in San Fernando Valley uh, uh, for the 4th of July. <laughs> no, I won't. I'll be in I know. <laughs> I know. You'll be back east. That's why That's why I could make that joke right there. And and if anybody comes and tries to find you there, you'll be uh, already on a jet plane. So uh, they, won't be, they won't be able to find you. Uh, no, you can reach out to Suskia Weber at Suskia underscore Weber on traditional social medias and at Suskia Weber on the union. Make sure you're signing up. Check the free union soccer community on all platforms. Look at this plug right here. That's the link tree, the union sports, the union sports.com on desktop. Starting next week, we're really going to be ramping up that content for all different positions, whether you're a striker or whether you're a defender, whether you're a midfielder. And obviously, you know, uh, close to our heart, goalkeepers, uh, exclusive content, content from all over the place and engage in the engagement area, guys. It's like Twitter. It's like Reddit. Uh, Daniel Ball has been posting stuff there. Uh, so uh, you got to get on there. It's free. It's very, very, very cool and very worth your time. Uh, obviously, guys, if you want to reach out to us, contact at insidethe18media.com or at Goalkeeper Podcast on all socials. If you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion, shout out to uh, all of those uh, Angel City fans who uh, said that we need to have Didi on the show. <laughs> And uh, at first, when I didn't hear back from you, I was like, oh, she's not interested. <laughs> oh, she's my God. <laughs> Forget about it. It's all I've heard about. He was so excited. I was. Oh, I was really, really I, excited. I tend to go off the grid often. <laughs> That's all right. We know where to find you at the beach now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just where, wherever. Dang, wherever I shouldn't wherever, have threw that out. <laughs> I know. Where there, wherever there's ocean shots being taken, you can find Dee Dee over, uh, over, over there, guys. Um, all right, guys, if you <laughs> want to reach out to me at Michael Majid, uh, MichaelMajidComedy.com, if you want all my tour dates. Uh, enjoy the Fourth of July weekend, everybody. Happy Fourth. Happy Fourth. Uh, Happy stay fourth. safe. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your your food out there. That's a weird thing to say. All right, let's just end Hi, this. <laughs> That's all the time on Inside the 18, and we're uh, out. Later, guys. Bye. <laughs>